Hello and welcome to Laura Fenton Gaming Reviews The Bard's Tale Trilogy. I'm your host Laura Fenton. Today's uh, review, we are going to review the entire uh, trilogy. I'm mainly going to focus on three since I already reviewed uh, one and two. I'll toss in uh, anything related to the entire trilogy. So is it worth it after the third and final uh, game of the Bard's Tale Trilogy release? Let's find out, shall we? Now here's a quick recap of the story for all three games. In the Bard's Tale 1 you had to defeat Mangar the Dark by doing some serious uh, dungeon hopping. It was very fun uh, in the uh, first game. In the second game you had to collect the seven pieces of the Destiny Wand and defeat all seven Death Snares that Largo Santos has set up and you had to become the Destiny Knight in order to defeat him. Now in the Bard's Tale 3, unfortunately all that hard work, you're about to return to Scarab Ray as heroes. Well, Scarab Ray's in ruins. The tragedy has struck. Tarjan went to other uh, worlds to destroy it. Your objects go through each of those worlds to stop them and then reach his final world in the defeat. It sounds simple enough, however, the journey was well worth it. The reward at the end was extremely worth it. I will not spoil it. If you love the story of building your characters in 1, 2, and then 3, go for it. It's well worth it. As my review of the Bard's Tale 1 Remastered and the Bard's Tale 2 Remastered, well, the Bard's Tale 3, uh, Chrome did a great job of uh, recreating the uh, worlds for the Bard's Tale 3. That's the Sulphur Springs. They have sulfur there. Grass is still moving like in the Bard's Tale 2 uh, grass. And the wilderness is still beautiful. They did a great job of that overall. They even brought tragedy to the ruins of Scarab Ray. If you remember in the Bard's Tale 1, it was a beautiful city that was overrun by uh, monsters. Well, it's a ruined city that's been well overrun by monsters. This was very tragic. I even did a few uh, moments for uh, Scarab Ray from uh, the past until uh, now in this game. It was very sad. They even made uh, Gildy uh, ice driven. You could tell the details of heavy ice and snow. Great job on that. Then they did a Borea, which is on leaves, and it was a beautiful world. I mean, Luchidzia, the world's beautiful too. That's more like spring, but overall, they did a great job of that. Even the world of Tenbrosia, the world of darkness, shadows, and night, that's internal. They did a great job of that environment, bring that to life overall. As for uh, Malfifia, the final world, as an example of the graphics, they did a great job of that overall. I mean, it's like real scary, you're in hell basically, and well, the mazes don't scare you. The looks of this world definitely does scare you. So overall, they did not skimp at all on uh, remastering the worlds, unlike other games where they just uh, put it there like the old days and just slap a coat of uh, HD paint on there. Bravo, uh, Chrome and XL Entertainment for the graphics department. As for the controls itself, it's basically still the same with uh, WASD controls for your movement. Also, you can also use the buttons to cast spells or touch the uh, icon menus. You can even uh, when you uh, touch buttons with the spells, you could type it in just like the old game. Like for example, GILL is for underwater. Overall, they did a great job of the controls and movement. The game made it very easy and very fluid. You can even use your uh, Fingers to type real fast on certain situations in combat make things a lot more quicker, so bravo on the controls. Now with the uh, UI, it's very beautiful. You have it uh, just like the original Bard's Tale. I have it real big just like the first game. Now they brought what from the second game is Danger Zones, like the Death Snares. However, in the third game, when the uh, eyes grow green, that means one thing, one thing only. There's regeneration panels of spells or hit points. So they did a great job over that, all of uh, proving the AI overall. So let's talk about the portraits real quick. Remember this ugly archmage from the Bard's Tale uh, 2? You want to cringe going, oh, he is real ugly. Well, guess what? You get to be this guy. A whole party of Mangar the Dark. Yes, you could be that, you could be uh, Kyran, you could be Garth, you could be Tarjan, you could be Largo Xanthos on your characters. 
my only disappointment on the portrait section is, like I said before, is uh, they didn't bring the portraits from Bart's Tale 2 and 3. I would love that, even newer ones, uh, variants of the female ones. Overall, they did a great job of giving you choice. Which is much, much better than the Bart's Tale 2 Archmage. As for uh, character transfer, well, guess what? The Bart's Tale 2 uh, gave you a choice of from 1 to 2 with full power or full reset. Full power means you just came in as you're uh, overpowered or just when you beat in the game. And full reset means you get reset to the level. Now, they add a new thing called moderate reset where you're uh, reset on a suggested level. They did a great job of character transfers in the game. It was a one-to-one -one ratio, minus a few items that they uh, taken away, like the master key and such. Overall, they did an excellent job of uh, the UI, the portraits, and especially the uh, character transfers. Let's talk about difficulty real quick about Bar's Tale 1. It wasn't that bad at all. Bar's Tale 2, the difficulty was in the death snails, really. Now, remember Garth in this game where you buy and sell stuff? Well, guess what's going to happen to him in Bart's Tale 3. Same thing with uh, Roscoe ahead you see right here we're going to go into. Guess what's going to happen with him also in Bart's Tale 3. And also there's Legacy Mode in the game I'll touch up more in a bit. Well, because the Scarab Ray has been destroyed, guess what happens to uh, Garth and uh, Roscoe? They're gone. You have to start dropping items that you don't want no more or store them up in that uh, staple as your bank vault. Yeah, your regular bank's gone too. And only way to level by way is review board. And as for uh, Roscoe, no more spell regeneration for a price. You have to look for harmonic gems instead. Now, as for legacy mode, you get to choose uh, how difficult you want it to be like in the 80s. You could go full 9 or pick and choose which one. As of this review, I didn't do that at all, unfortunately. Now, I'll touch over the newbie dungeons real quick. Now, Bar's Tale 2 wasn't bad for the newbie dungeons. You just had to stay on the floor for a while to get at least like, three of the four uh, caster classes done. Now, this game is a bit more uh, difficult overall. I mean, it's really difficult. For instance, Catacombs not, might be bad for, I say, getting up to two or three of your uh, spell class changes. However, you get to Utter Bray, yeah, that's very difficult for uh, new players. I heard some make complaints about on the board, even though I brought a full uh, party in as I transfer them over. And as for the difficulty spike itself, it kind of simmers down a bit if you uh, get to the later worlds until uh, the last part of uh, Temeritia and uh, now uh, FIFA. But still, if you're just uh, still playing it for the first time, skipping the three, well, it can be very uh, difficult. Now, it's slightly less difficult if you do a partial transfer, a full difficulty. Full transfer, it's not that bad at all until the two rolls I said before. Now, as far as the uh, Malfifia world, that's the most difficult in the game. The spike is really there. Enemies could take about two or three nukes, maybe more. I mean, this is the last uh, world in the game. They really stepped up on difficulty on that overall. Even with the difficulty the game, they did a great job of it, especially incorporating legacy mode where you get to pick and choose which uh, part of legacy mode you want to do, full nine or not. Also, uh, when you get to the last two worlds, especially uh, Malfifia, difficulty really spikes up there. As for the classes, they brought the original ones from the Bard's Tale 1, such as a Warrior, Paladin, Hunter, Bard, Rogue, and Monks. Your melee classes basically, with the exception of Bard, could use songs for uh, singing that buffs you up and such. And then your rogues, of course, uh, disable traps and identify items. Then you have your casters, such as magicians, conjurers, sorcerers, and uh, wizards. What they uh, did also in the Bard's Tale 2, that's in 3, is the archmages. You have to be all four, definitely, in order to get that. So they brought those in. So let's talk about the two new classes and their requirements. Now, remember that newbie dungeon I talked about? Well, after you've beaten the second newbie dungeon, you will have access to a Chronomancer. Here's the deal. You could transport to other worlds. However, it's a hefty price. All your spells from the other five uh, casting classes are bye-bye. So, it's a good idea to only take one since the price is steep. They don't look powerful now. However, they get the what spell, which is identifying items. And they get the uh, Fafis spell, which is really powerful. <laughs> That was a good class. Let's talk about the other one, the Geomancer. 
Last but not least is the uh, Geomancer class. It's cross between a warrior that can wear all uh, weapons and armor, well most of them, and then cast very powerful spells. However, here's the thing, you have to go through the Kenintia world and do uh, a certain thing in order to do that. They are very powerful. They can not only reveal uh, the map and such, they can also disable all traps on the said floor, and they have a nasty earth moss spell that can, it's like an instant kill spell. Overall, these classes are a nice flavor to the Bar's Tale 3, the Geomancer, and the Chronomancer. As for the worlds in the Bar's Tale 1 and 2, they did justice on that. Well, Bar's Tale 3, they did some mega justice. Such as, for example, Tamaria's war, World of War and Strife is mainly in dungeons and such, but still, it's a pretty good world overall. Then Avoria's trees, plants, and uh, beauty. Why, Gildia, well, it's a frozen wasteland. You should not stay there long, otherwise you'll freeze to death. And then Lucentia is a world full of rose gardens, uh, purple mountains, and uh, beautiful crypto. It's real beautiful. I'll touch more on that in this video during the Dungeon Puzzle segment. As for uh, Kenenti, it's a world of uh, robotics and machinery that the Dords built. Unfortunately, the machinery is run amok in this world. As for uh, Tenbrogia, it's a shallow realm. Yes, even the town has a shallowy look on it. They did a great job over that overall for that world. As I did briefly touch up on Tenbrosia, a uh, world of war and strife, and in the wilderness you saw in the video, they did a great job of that, and Scarab Prey. Now, Fifia, they did a wonderful job of that world, which is the final world, which is evil and hellish. Overall, the world themes in the Bar's Tale 3, 3, they did a great job. And also, if you played Bar's Tale 1 and 2, the world theme of those worlds were wonderful, especially in 2. As for the dungeon puzzles, the Bar Cell 3 did a wonderful job. It's not like Bar Cell 2, which they really do an extremely wonderful job. Now in this one, there's some nice puzzles that are refreshing, such as Illyria's uh, tomb with the uh, roses. You have to figure out which uh, rose you have to get to who. Overall, they did a great job of that. And also, the dungeon looks nice and uh, gorgeous. I loved it overall. And then another example is the Festering Pit. They did a great job of that, too. You need to bring a certain item in order to defeat a certain person, otherwise that person blocks away just like the uh, Crystal Nalum in the Bar's Tale 1. And then Ten Broshi is another great example too, which is uh, you need to solve actually some of the dungeons in order to find the last dungeon, which is good. As for Temertia, well guess what, you need to go through each of the uh, war uh, time era realms yeah that is right once you figure this out then you're in the actual temerity realm you had to do a lot of writing though even in today's standards but overall they did a good job of that as for uh, Malfifia well you were given uh, certain items towards the end of the game from your uh, bank box that was put in that you collected from the other world yes so you had to do the other six worlds in order to get these items in order to solve the uh, statues for that in order to get through it real quick. That's correct. You have to get through the mazes in that world and figure out which item belongs to who for that and use it on that statue. Overall the dungeons are great and the puzzles are wonderful to solve so bravo on that. As for the sound and music they did a great job overall in the Bard's Tale trilogy uh, especially pouring over all the songs from 1, 2 and now 3. As for the sound itself they did a decent job however what really sh shines in the sound and music department is actually the music. Let's listen to the sound first. That's the sound of spells uh, hidden in the enemies. Not bad. Here's the Secret Ballad from the Adventure Guild in Barcel 1 and his uh, song in Barcel 2. It's a great job. Even the music uh, changes its tone when you equip different instruments instead of like uh, 
lutes all playing around all the time. It's like obes and such on Rhyme of Dual Time. And finally, the best song from the Bard's Tale 3 is the Minister's Shield. It's a wonderful song. The sound was not bad. I love the nuke sound too, which was good. However, the music shines in this game really well. They did a great job, especially the Minister uh, Shield and the Rhyme of Dual Time on different instruments. Bravo Chrome and NXL Entertainment. Now let's talk about the bad. First of all, portraits on the Emnies. I'm not talking about the player ones. That's being addressed in a future patch. However, you see those scroll jewels? They look familiar. Let's go to the next world on those guys. And as soon as we get into combat, yes, scroll jewels look like gremlins. I was disappointed in that. At least they should have did like the Barstel one. They did a palette swap on the red and green dragons. I was disappointed overall. Despite the fact the portrait does look beautiful in the game, the kind of bit was lazy on that. It could have been years ago, like in 19, uh, I think 88 when the game came out. Yeah, they could have did that too. Overall, it's disappointing that I wish they would add more uh, variety. Even a uh, palette swap would have been refreshing, like the Bars Tell One they did. As for a Geomancer and Nuke spell, well, let's talk about the Geomancer first with their OP spells. Yes, they can reveal the entire map making exploration real quick and guessing a lot easier. Even the Earth Maul spell is so much OP. I mean, come on. A certain meters away, you cast that. If it lands, enemies die in an instant. Real easy. It takes the fear out of, unfortunately, certain foes. Unlike the Bars Tale 1 2, you were scared of them. Not in this game, thanks to the Geomaster. Plus, they wear uh, all the most of the weapons in the game, makes them extremely OP'd. As for the Nuke spell, oh my goodness. This is the most wrong spell in the game. I loved it, however, I realized after uh, waiting for a while, that spell was really powerful. You could get through dungeons real quick, foes real quick, then pop a Harmony Gem if you need to. Uh, Refill your magic. You're gonna see why that's so wrong. See? The damage on it is insane. That's my only gripe about this section is those two right there. What is my uh, final verdict on the Barcel uh, Trilogy Remastered? Buy it day one! Despite the fact that the Geomancer is really OP, the nuke spell is so wrong in the game, and um, the lack of a palette swap in the game. Overall, uh, Chrome Studios did a great job of uh, bringing the Bard's Tale trilogy to life. They should join the ranks of uh, Blue Point Studios, who did the God of War collection, and uh, Capcom's R&D Division 1, who did a great job of the Resident Evil 2019 remake. Bravo on their end. As for NXL Entertainment, they're the ones who brought the original trilogy to life and definitely approve of this uh, wonderful uh, collection. I cannot wait for Chrome doing the uh, Wasteland 1 uh, Remastered Edition. I can't wait to play that. Well, this is it for my review on the Bard's Tale uh, Trilogy Remastered. This is Lorfent signing off. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, everyone.